Let us begin. Karen and Michaela, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having us. All right, so we're just going to go around, have everyone toss them whatever questions they have. You guys can answer whichever ones you feel like. I'm sure there'll be the usual stupid questions that you're going to get plenty up throughout the day. So if we do ask any of those, feel free to call us out on it and make some more entertaining footage. <laughs> The foolish viewers who do not already know. Exactly. We can read that the video description. Should we introduce ourselves or do you guys want to introduce us? Go for it. Please. Oh. I'm Karen Strassman. I'm an on camera and voiceover actress and a coach, and I'm thrilled to be here. Uh, hey, I'm Michaela Dietz. Uh, I'm a VO actress, and uh, yeah, thanks for having me. Thank you. Well, I guess I will kick things off with a question for Michaela. So, uh, you play Amethyst in Steven Universe, which has become incredibly popular these oh, days. This is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> no, you thought. So, so sorry, I, I zoned out. I was like hanging out with Karen for a second. That's cool. So, I guess the question is um, with the ever growing popularity of the show, what do you feel are that um, things responsible for making it such a. Uh, well loved series. Uh, I think Steven is so special and I think it speaks to so many people because um, you know it tackles so many different issues that I think a lot of uh, maybe other animated shows don't um, and so you know I mean there's this whole world of uh, adventure and exploration and so I think you know so it targets like children but then the messages are all so poignant, and I think that's why it draws in a lot of um, adult viewership as well. Oh, great, and Karen, I auditioned for that like you two did? weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, I forgot. I forgot what character. Oh, oh. But, um, I the show is great. I bet I know which one, <laughs> but I can't say it. Yeah, Ooh, cool. Such questions. Was yeah, it a gem? I, I, I can say that I auditioned for it. Yeah. Are you a diamond? I'm, I'm, I'm fangirling out right now. It's an awesome <laughs> show. All right, well, I guess next question directed at you. I mean, I'm looking over all the things that you've done, and there is a lot of stuff. You've been in video games, you've been in anime, you've done a lot of coaching as well. So I guess to start things off, what is the main difference in the kind of acting you have to do when you're going between um, video games and anime or anything else? What's the small variations that people wouldn't really think of when they think about doing you know, voice acting jobs? Um... So when you're dubbing anime, you you have the screen in front of you with the Japanese version. And the goal is generally to get as close to the Japanese version in American essence as possible. So you're not bringing a Japanese essence to it, but you're still keeping, you're being as true to the Japanese version as you can within an American cultural sense. And in terms of the voice, you know, you're really kind of looking at what they're doing and recreating that in English. Um, and the tone and all of that. And so you're really looking at the screen and bringing your voice into that to make it come to life in English. Video games generally, unless they're a Japanese dub, a dub of Japanese, generally, most video games I do, you don't have a screen to look at, you don't have a character to look at, um, you just have piles of lines, you know, line 0326, you know, um, watch out, it's a bomb, you know, or, you know, line 62, like if I was doing Isha from StarCraft Two, you know, um, you've already asked me that question, but I will tell you again. And then there's all these different options. So you just have pages of lines that you're not, you're not copying any other version generally, but you're making them come to life. And with video games, it's really about where does that line sit in the game. So again, for anime, you're looking to serve the Japanese version. Video games, you're looking to serve the game as a whole, and you have a director with you telling you, okay, this line is here, and the character has already taken a lot of damage, so they're injured, 
but they're still angry. So we need something to feel that you're injured, but you're still angry. And then later on, you're injured and you're barely breathing, and you're going to be dying in about seven lines from now. So <laughs> don't die yet, but we want to feel that weakness. So it's all about where it is in context and how to make that particular small moment in each video game come to life. So that's the difference between those two. And then there's animation, which is original animation, which is what Steven Universe is, where there's a story, it's not a game, and you often, more often than not, get to sit with the whole cast. And um, everybody's there, and you all have the script for you know the 20-minute episode or 22-minute episode or whatever it is. And you're all, you know, you're reading your part like a play, um, except they're recording it. And, Nobody sees you, they only hear you. So you get to work off of each other and create the character spontaneously in that moment. So that's kind of the three differences of those genres. That's a, that's a lengthy answer, but there you go. Lengthy but good. Mm. Yeah. Nice gummy girl. I'll keep going then. I will have some idea. All right, so like you mentioned, when you're doing you know, original animation, there's often the whole cast there, so you guys can kind of bounce uh, ideas and interactions around with each other. Has that ever impacted the way that the episode might have turned out? Have you done anything during rehearsal that made the writers go, ooh, better change this around, or just generally impacted the way that the episode turned out? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, we don't really rehearse. We, we just go for it. Um, and we, we really work off of each other. Um, and actually, while we're recording for Steven, uh, the writers are usually sitting in the booth. So, you know, maybe they'll tweak a little line or they'll say, Michaela, just go for it. Like, you know, you can add lip here or whatever. So, um, yeah, oftentimes it's sort of a collaborative effort, but things do evolve. Um, for the most part, though, I mean, the writing's so great on Steven that I just try to stay pretty close to the, the script. So. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I would agree with everything she says. And, 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 but I, at the same time, often when we're reading original animation, there's a certain playfulness in the room, so people will add in buttons or, you know, there's things that will add in, like efforts, like, and th th those will stay. You know, they'll be like, oh my gosh, that's great. You know, do that again. And so the actors definitely bring the playfulness and creativity to it, which often comes out different in the wash than the writers might have expected and they even like it better. And then, and, and also what happens is you, normally you'll read the whole thing and then you'll go back and do different takes and different lines and they'll say, okay, give me five of this and you just, five different versions of it um, and then they can pick the one they want. All right, fantastic. Uh, let's see, you guys have any behind the scenes amusing anecdotes that you feel like sharing? I know, tough question to be oh, on the spot man. for. But. I should have I, I should have thought about this before. Uh, I'm I'm sure I do. Do you have any? I have tons. It's just sometimes <laughs> they come up in context. Yeah, the recalls. Oh, you know like, what? Mm. Yeah, they come up in a certain <laughs> context. Let me see if anything. If I have any stories from this past week. Yeah, it, it's a real open-ended, vague question. So. Um, I mean, you know, this week in Stephen. Uh, I just, I, you know, oftentimes we'll be recording and we'll just crack each other up so much that we have to stop. And it's actually kind of disruptive sometimes, but like, um, you know, it's, it's sort of like what you said, there's a playfulness in the room, you're really working off of each other. And um, oftentimes I'll have to like, if Zach's doing something hilarious, I'll have to like turn into the wall and try my best not to Or, or like this laugh. nobody sees that you're laughing. Yeah. <laughs> it's really, it's really, yeah. Am I good? Yeah, go. Okay, awesome. So while we're on the topic of the Steven Universe, I know that the um, promo trailer for the upcoming Steven Bond just came out. I just saw it yesterday. And so I noticed that the tone of the show has gotten a lot darker as time has gone on. So if I was just to ask, um, how is it like seeing the development of the characters go from episode one to where we are now, where a lot of the plot has been thickening and we're seeing character changes and character development, especially in um, terms of Amethyst, how have you in like seeing the characters grow and how has that affected you in the show? Um, I mean, I'm so excited about the developments. I think, um, you know, what was originally revealed to us was Amethyst just sort of like a ball busting, uh, not really caring much sort of 
person, you know, with some, some quips here and there. And I think as the show's progressed, we've realized that she um, has so many layers to her. We've learned about sort of how she's come to be with the crystal gems. And I mean, um, I'm actually, I'm an adoptee. And so part of her origin story is similar to mine, and um, I can definitely tap into that. Um, I think, yeah, I mean, that the Into Deep trailer is... Yeah. <laughs> Have you recovered yet? I had so many uh, chills. Quite, I was like... <laughs> I, was talking, I saw it last night as I was making my way over to my friend Brooklyn to stay. Right? Yeah. And I was talking about it for 20 minutes in the car. I'm like, oh my god, the song that Pearl sings in the, in the trailer. I'm like, oh no, something bad's going to happen. I'm not ready. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think they're really trying to build up right. the drama and conflict. But, um, you know, even though it's taken on sort of a more uh, dramatic tone, I think you'll be surprised. There's still some of those lighthearted, um, comical moments. I think, you know, Rebecca and the whole universe they, they do a really great job of balancing that. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. All right, so I guess staying on the uh, subject of Steven Universe for a bit, there's a lot of, you know, great songs in the show, like the one that you just mentioned. Um, so I'm just wondering what kind of musical experience and training you had before coming onto the show. None. <laughs> yeah, um, I well. feel so, uh, I'm learning so much. I mean, Didi, Didi Magno Hall is an incredible singer. I mean, we all know Estelle's work. Um, Zach Callison has an incredible range. That kid can sing anything. So I feel like I'm really good at just sitting back and letting them uh, teach me some things. <laughs> I would not say singing is my strong suit, but I enjoy doing it. And, um, I guess my favorite part is just like harmonizing. Um, as you can tell, I have a very low register, so um, that that's been pretty great. Uh, but yeah, no, I'm not like trained or anything. I played French horn growing up. That's pretty cool. Really cool. One of my yeah, favorite songs cool. being the sound. Yeah, man. On the run. So you what? One of my favorite songs in the sound. The entire song soundtrack. Oh really? Yeah. That's uh, Jeff Lou wrote that. He's a uh, He's um, a board artist, and he also obviously is a musician, but he's uh, he's great, yeah, very talented. And I can't hear that one without whistling along to the part <laughs> in the middle. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> My band covered it, actually. Really? Yeah. I would love to hear it. Yeah, for sure. I don't know if we have a recording of it. Okay. We played it on a whim because we knew the chords. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> All right, so back to Karen for this question. So again, you've done a lot of different roles in a lot of different, you know, games and anime, and they just vary in character type so much. I mean, you've got, in Persona alone, you've got a robot and you've got a little girl, and uh, you've got Soy Fawn and Bleach, and then you've got parts in Momo. various... Yep. Soy Fawn and Momo. So yeah, I guess my question is just, um, how do you get in character for each of these you know, vastly different personality types? They're all like really good friends or family members who you know really well after a little while. So, you know, when you're sitting with a friend, you're like, oh yeah, I'm with Dee Dee, or oh yeah, I'm with Susan. And you're just, it takes you a second to click into your mode with them. And with each of those characters, it, once I've done them for a while, like the very first session, when you're creating, it's a little different because you're actually creating the character. But once you know them, for better or for worse, they live inside of me. So it's just like, oh, you know, open up that door, you know, oh, there's that bedroom, you know, oh, Nanaka's right here, you know, and then, you know, Igis is right here. She is very easy to find because she is right inside of me. Um, and these are characters that I've done for a long time in many, you know, different shows. There's some characters that I've just done once and I've sort of forgotten, like I've spent a couple hours recording them and then I'll go back to the studio and then in the studio, they'll have a voice reference, and they'll play me the voice reference. I'm like, oh yeah, they live in this place, <laughs> you know? Um, so yeah, kind of, once, once you spend a couple hours with them, they, they just, it, I mean, they exist technically in terms of where they're placed in the mouth and in the instrument, but they also exist in spirit as well, <laughs> for better or for worse. <laughs> Do you find yourself mimicking in your character's voices? That happens after a session. Like after a session, like when I used to, when I was recording, I guess whenever I record, I guess 
I will leave the session talking a little bit like, even if it's in my regular, you know, and their rhythms and their, you know, the same thing with Nanako. I mean, like if I'm recording Nanako, you know, my energy kind of just, even not just the voice, but my energy is kind of up here, you know, like, hi, you guys, you know, and so it'll take a little while for my energy just to drop into, you know, my normal age and maturity.